Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Comic Book Nostalgia. I'm CB Nostalgia, and I thought we could talk a little bit of Young Justice. Well, as we all patiently sit and wait for the very much hoped Season 5 announcement of Young Justice, I thought we could take some time and go back and start looking at that Ask Greg page for interesting tidbits and information about the show. Recently, I noticed a couple of entries about the one and only Roy Harper, currently known as Will Harper, so I thought we could take a couple of minutes to talk about Roy. Now, the Harpers have very interesting lineage across Young Justice. The group of clones now are bow hunter security. But going back to season one, it was all Roy all the time. Now, as many of you know, Roy was the mole in season one and a key character in that part of the series. And even though he still plays a pretty big part in it now, he's one of the focuses of Young Justice targets and often a fan favorite. Like I said, there were several questions on Ask Greg about Roy, so I thought we could break down a couple of them. First and foremost, many fans, like myself, were wondering where Roy was most of Season 4. We got all those focus character arcs over this season, and quite honestly, he was an OG member and played a massive role in Season 1. Many fans were wondering why Roy didn't get his own character arc, and now Greg Wiseman himself has responded. Now, this question was written by an anonymous poster, and they asked, I know Young Justice Phantoms on the core characters of Season 1, but how come Roy isn't even a main character in Phantoms? He also played a significant role just like the other characters, except Rocket. Now, Greg's response is pretty much what I expected. He said, ultimately, we only have so much screen time allotted to us. And Will, I'm assuming you're referring to our current Will Harper when you said Roy, isn't really doing the superhero thing right now. So if we had, say, four more episodes, I suppose we could have done an arc focusing on bow hunter security. But we didn't. You still, you got at least a bit of that in the first issue of Young Justice Targets. Now, this is all true, and I totally get what Greg is saying here. Quite honestly, having only 24 episodes, and I can't believe we're saying only 24 episodes, does put some limitations on how much storytelling can take place. The show was all over the place this year, and we went everywhere, so I do understand why it was pretty hard to find a place for bow hunter security. That's actually one of the segments of the show I would love to see get a spinoff, but let's get that season 5 first. Now, one of the other questions Greg got on Ask Greg was one that seemingly addressed a plot hole involving Cheshire. As many of you know, Roy, now known as Will, and Cheshire have a child together, and that has been an ongoing plot point for about two seasons now. One question Greg got seemed to want to clarify the timeline around Cheshire and the League of Shadows, and how her helping Roy impacted all of those events. Let's check it out. Now, Greg is asked, in Season 4, Cheshire mentions that she has been on the League of Shadows hit list since betraying them to save Red Arrow. However, in Young Justice Legacy, we see her working with the Shadows in Greece after she helped Red Arrow. Was the contract only taken out against her later, perhaps for another reason? Or was she able to come to some temporary arrangement with them around the time of Legacy? Greg actually gives a very, very precise answer. He says... After Jade left Roy, she was able to briefly reconcile with the Shadows, who placed her under protection, temporarily suspending the contract on her life. Once she realized she was pregnant, she fled the Shadows again, and the contract was reinstated. But it is an open contract, not considered a priority. And once she and Roy reconciled, after she had given birth to Liam, it's unclear whether that now put Cheshire slash Jade under the terms of the light's nuclear option. Even Jade really doesn't know. Now, I find this pretty interesting, and it really does seem to clarify a lot. Greg makes it pretty clear the League of Shadows absolutely could still come for Jade, putting Will, aka Roy, and of course Liam in the line of fire. Now, when I read it, though, one thing to consider is there has been a change of management at the top of the league. As many of you know, it's no longer run by Ra's al Ghul, and that could be precisely why she is safe now. Quite honestly, I would find this open contract and that whole history to be quite an interesting plot line for a potential Season 5. And I think if it ever does get addressed, that'll be exactly the space. Now, we're going to try to do one of these Ask Greg videos at least once a week. I know all of you guys are really hungry for anything Young Justice, and we're going to be waiting for some news, I think, for a little while. So, instead of putting our hopes up, only to have them dashed, let's talk about the things we know on Earth-16. 
Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button to get all of your Young Justice content. We're going to try to give it to you a couple times a week, and I can't wait to see you here. Now, until we know more, what do you guys think? Do you think Roy Harper, a.k.a. Will, should have had his own story arc during Young Justice Phantoms? And do you think the League of Shadows could start pursuing that contract on Cheshire once again? Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you hit like, click subscribe, and if you don't ring that bell, you won't get any updates. Peace.